right, so I'm thinking about starting a new little series. Uh, we got something to come back to every now and then. Spent a lot of time on the road, uh, traveling, working for Bass and FOW before that. And uh, got to see a lot of pretty cool stuff. Some things that were kind of sketchy. Some things that were just really, really cool moments. And uh, I think I'm going to talk about some of that stuff, do a little story time with you guys here and there. If you like it, let me know. I'll do some more. But let's just go ahead and jump right in there on the first story. This one involves Randall Tharp winning his first FLW tour event. Flipping on Okeechobee. Pretty cool story. Story time with Shay Baker. So I was working for FLW at the time. A buddy of mine, Rob Newell, had got me a job over there. And I was shooting pictures, doing on the water coverage. Uh, Randall Tharp had finished, I believe, second the year before to Brandon McMillan. Uh, they got to be big buddies. They both love punching. And Brandon's from Okeechobee, and, uh, or I guess he's from the south end down there. I can't remember the name of that little town. Uh, but anyway, basically the shores of Lake Okeechobee. And Tharp had finished second the year before. And uh, so there was a lot of eyes on him. He, he had pretty much moved down there and was fishing down there a lot in the winters, getting really, really good at flipping, which he was already good at it, coming from up around Lake Gunnersville. But, uh, oh, here one more. Oh my gosh, that is super aggressive. I'm trying to tell a story here. Settle down. I got to throw back in there. So anyway, this is going to get interrupted again, but Tharp, uh, a lot of eyes were on him. He was expected to do good, and uh, I was out covering him, and I was covering a lot of people fishing around the Monkey Box, North Shore area, real popular area. And when I say a lot of eyes were on him, some guys were actually really kind of watching him a little too closely, some of the other competitors. I won't name any names because I'm not trying to get into all of that, but from my vantage point with a camera, very close proximity. So, you know, some guys were respecting him, giving him his space, but some guys, he'd pull up on something, they'd look down, mark it on the graph, and they'd go over there as soon as he pulled off. And it was the most eloquent display of mind teasery. I'm trying to tell a story. It's a pretty good one. Oh, got me hung up in a tree. But basically, he uh, just played with those folks. Played with them. He was on such another level in that tournament. I watched him go and, uh, hang on just a second here. You're going to get me in a predicament. It's kayak fishing. It's hard to tell stories. So, now that's a way we can get back to our story. So, rudely interrupted. Thanks, bud. So, I watched Tharp just mind, you know what, a bunch of people. And he would go and fish just junk, just garbage. I mean, he's still probably going to get a bite here and there. But he would just go fish stuff. And this is, I haven't talked to him that much about it, but this is how I viewed the day, how I saw it go down. It may not be completely accurate, but it's my story. But I'm pretty sure this is what he was doing. But like he would go and fish just kind of community stuff or junk that he wasn't really concerned about because the bite, the better bite came up in the day and it was kind of moving from what I saw about every, you know, 30 minutes every day, getting a little later and a little later. So he would just go fish kind of random stuff to start with. Well, two or three guys would watch him, other competitors in the tournament and see where he was fishing and then they'd go pound it. So by the time the bite turned on, he had them so screwed up because they were fishing where he wasn't really worried about it. He would go and sneak into where he really thought he could get big bites. And I watched that joker catch. I don't remember if it was a 29 pound day or a 32 pound day or what it was, but I watched him catch five big ones flipping high set mats in like 30 minutes. I mean, he caught 30 pounds, give or take, in 30 minutes pretty much. And he would pull up to a mat, coast in, drop his power poles, get up, flip in the mat, yo-yo it a few times, and bam, catch like a seven-pounder. It was disgusting. 
it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen covering tournaments. And, I, you know, I saw a pretty good bit of stuff. We'll talk about some more of those things later. But the psychological warfare that was going on above and beyond catching 30 pounds, like that deal, fishing at that level is so much more than casting and catching, tricking a fish. I mean, there's just so much strategy that goes into it. And that was, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So a lot of y'all know Tharp's nickname, the Honey Badger. Well, that's where it came from. I'm pretty sure Rob Newell, my buddy, coined the term. And that's because there was a video back then called uh, called the Honey Badger. And I'll pull it up and put a little shot on here. It's got, you know, PG probably 20-something because I guess, you know, rated R. Because it's got some language in there. But, uh, but the premise of the video, the gist of it, is that honey badgers don't care. You got jackals and birds trying to take what they're working for, what they're trying to catch. Like, oh, honey badger will go out and catch a rat or something, and a bird would swoop in and try to steal it from him. And the honey badger don't care. He just keeps on going. He just gets him something else. And that's kind of what was happening on the water that day. Thart would go, and he'd fish a spot, and he'd catch a couple fish. About the time, you know, oh, my goodness. Oh, so rude. He'd catch a couple fish about the time, uh, you know, they'd start biting, kind of signal when they were biting for him. He'd just pick up his trolling motor and run to the juice. And while he was focused on the juice, everybody else was beating up on what he'd fished all morning, which he really didn't care about. It was pretty crazy to see a guy kind of waste time in a $100,000 tournament when he's got a chance to be that confident in what he had in store. He didn't want to go straight to it because if he had gone straight to it, that morning when they weren't biting he'd have burned it you know that'd be five or six boats in it by the time they were biting but i mean it was it was sick he'd go and just kind of lead folks astray and then pull up on the juice and be by himself slide through there catch what he needed be gone in 30 minutes nobody was the wiser and that guy ended up winning 100 i guess 125 because the ranger cup pretty sick that's how the honey badger got his name and he lives up to it Honey badger don't care. Good stuff.